Congressman Greg Walden of Oregon, one of the architects of the GOP's health care bill. Big day. Thank you for joining us, Congressman. You're welcome. Good morning, Chris. Good so, to be with you. do you think that you will have the vote today, tonight, and do you think you can get the votes? I think it's yes to both questions. Uh, a lot of work has gone into this over many months, not just in the last 24 hours, but you know how these things come together. The president has been extraordinary in his direct involvement, as has Secretary Price and Vice President Pence and the others in the, in the White House have been very involved, meeting with members of all persuasions, frankly, on this, to, to put together a plan that is the best plan for the American people. And that's what we're moving forward on. We believe it will come to the floor today, and we believe we'll have the votes. A couple of conceptual issues that seem to be creating divisions, even within your own party. Uh, the first is some of the concessions you just taking out mandatory coverage provisions, whether it's mental health or maternity leave, essentially allowing someone to price a plan to their own needs. That sounds good to a lot of people who want to see their premiums come down, but it would be a material change, would it not, from the notion of shared sacrifice, that by all of us being in the pool, even if some of us don't need certain uh, points of care, it reduces the cost for all overall. Are you changing that on Chris purpose? Yeah, Chris, so those are obviously very important uh, protections uh, in the current law, but they're also protections. When I was in the state legislature, we uh, made sure we're available in many cases. Um, look, we want to make sure that, that people have access to more plans. As you know, uh, plan providers are pulling out of the markets. There are states going forward that may have no option on the Obamacare exchange. Premiums in my own state have gone up 50 percent in the last two years. And while we have a couple of plans left on the exchange, I worry about other areas where one out of three counties in America, you're down to one plan. So we have to make some adjustments here. And, and I'll tell you, I've heard from a lot of people all over the country about the fact that they're forced to buy a plan that has uh, provisions in it that they don't need, don't want. And some of them are walking away. If you look at the data, Data, by a, a two to one margin, 20 million people said, right. no, I'll pay a penalty. I'll, I'll take the, the exemption right. and not buy insurance. And that's hurting the market and that pooled sacrifice. So we're trying to find the, the balance here where we have essential protections. And those are, I understand that. Um, but we can do that through the state regulators and allows a little more flexibility in these plans so that they're more affordable and then people will take them up. That's how you get to the pooling that you and I would agree is really important. But speak to that a little bit more deeply because the give seems sure. to also include a takeaway. You remove the mandate, so now you're going to have a lot of young people or people who are willing to risk it not enter in. And the CBO, fairly or unfairly, includes those people as losing coverage. However, that would be volitional. That would be a choice. Well, that's... But you're giving them that exactly. choice by removing the mandate. Oh, and the oh, reason I... that it was in the ACA, just so you get the full context of the question, yeah, was yeah, they sure. put these provisions into the ACA because states weren't doing it on their own, right? The, the right. uniform coverage wasn't there for too many people, so they mandated it. Speak to those points. Yeah, no, they're really good points. So of, of those who chose not to buy insurance, in fact, think about this, Chris. People are paying $695 a year to the IRS so that they don't have to buy this right. insurance product under the Obamacare exchange. 30, 45% of those who said they're, who have taken that option to pay the IRS and not take Obamacare are under the age of 35. And so we know that, that the way it's set up today, these exchanges are getting smaller, not larger. Options are getting more expensive, not more affordable. And younger people are saying, no thanks, not interested in what you're buying. So we're trying to adjust this carefully to make sure that there are other options out there that work to get people into coverage they can afford with a deductible that they can afford to pay. And, and I think this is, remember, this is in context of just what we can do in reconciliation. Uh, we've passed legislation to allow small businesses to group up in, to, in the association health plans. I was a radio station over for more than 20 years. We always provided insurance to for our employees, but I never had the ability to group up and get buying power. I wanted that as a small business owner. So we're looking at this from a broader context than just what we can do in this bill to accomplish the goal you're talking about. And then you have a larger, uh, what Elijah Cummings just called a moral argument on uh, this issue, which is, you know this very well because of your state experience, but if you take money out of the Medicaid system, no matter how you want to define it, you're going to wind up having people that don't have the money for coverage. And yes, I understand, well, we're going to give it to states. The states have more choice. But you know what you're hearing from the governors of the states who need Medicaid expansion. They're saying, we don't have the money. We barely could deal with it before. Now you're giving us even less. Is there a moral argument to be made here that you're making a choice, well, which is well, we're okay with maybe millions of people who are poor 
not getting coverage to lower the premiums for some other groups. So, so let me take it from two different directions. One is first on what we started with, the essential benefits. When we wrote to the governors, many governors, including Governor of Ohio, uh, Kasich, said, please give us relief from the essential benefits. We can design better plans here that will work for Ohioans. Um, other state governors wrote us, said the same thing. That's an area where we think we have some common ground. And they think, they've come to us and said, please give us this. On the moral question, here's the one that should be asked. Under Obamacare, what the federal government said is if you're an able-bodied adult, the federal government will pay 100% to the states to put you on Medicaid. That resulted, by the way, of some people who had insurance being forced onto Medicaid when they didn't want it. That's the five to six million that had insurance lost it in some cases. Some of that was, was different because of the way the insurance market was crafted, but some of them got pushed onto Medicaid when they had insurance. And, and they said 100%. Now, in my state, if you're aged, blind, disabled, um, you know what the match rate is from the federal government? The federal government says we'll pay 63%. In other states, it's 50%. Now, that's the moral question. Should we spend 100% or 90% at the end of, of, of this 10-year window on, on able-bodied adults? Or should we shift that and try and put money into the age blind disabled? So we said, for example, on people, seniors in nursing homes, we're going to pay not only cost of medical inflation, but cost of medical inflation plus one, because we heard from people that said, look, that's a little more, more expensive population to manage. Uh, same for disabled. And so we plus that up. We have $100 billion going to states over the next 10 years, including 30 over the next two years, before, by the way, we make any changes in the, in the subsidies and support that are there for Obamacare. Um, and so I think we've got a balanced plan here that will work for people. Well, we're waiting on the CBO score. It was supposed to come out. It didn't. Um, but that right. main question that you'll have to deal with politically is you have more people covered or less. Congressman, appreciate you making the case on New Day. The devil's in the details Thank here. You. You're always welcome.